your turn, please state your full name and address for the record. Comments will be limited to four minutes per speaker. We will now open the public hearing. Would anyone like to comment on bond ordinance number 00270? wants some information to clarify what our bond ordinance is. your turn, please state your full name and address for the record. Comments will be limited to four minutes per speaker. We will now open the public hearing. 
Would anyone like to comment on bond ordinance number 2022-00272? Anyone for comment on this bond ordinance? Going once, going twice, seeing none, I'm closing this public hearing. We're now looking for a motion to adopt bond ordinance number 2022-00272 on second reading. Motion by Hobson, seconded by er Echo. Aaron, please do a roll call. Commissioner Echo? Yes. Commissioner Hobson? Yes. Deputy Director Fullian? Yes. Commissioner Please Ashton, Director of O'Connell? Yes. Motion passes. Could I ask uh, Captain Darren Anderson to please join me up here in the front? Ladies and gentlemen, tonight we're uh, recognizing some long-term county employees for outstanding service as they're doing their work at the end of this month. We'll begin with the county chief of detectives, the gentleman to my left, Darren Anderson. Chief Anderson began his law enforcement career in 1996 as a parole officer with the New Jersey Juvenile Justice Commission. He was a patrol officer with the Newcastle County Police Department in Delaware where he served until 2001 when he became a detective with our county prosecutor's office. As a detective, he worked in the office's sexual assault, child abuse, and major, major crimes unit before rising to the rank of operations lieutenant in 2011 and captain of detectives in 2013. He was sworn in as the county's chief detective in January 2016 overseeing the investigations and activities of all 43 detectives employed by the prosecutor's office. Most of us recognize Darren for his big smile and outgoing and friendly manner. But throughout his career, he's exhibited a deep and unshakable commitment to public safety and delivering justice for all crime victims. On behalf of our board, we want to thank and recognize him for his outstanding service and wish him well on all his future endeavors. And joining us tonight is his boss, our prosecutor, Scott Cofina. Scott, do you have anything you'd like to say? Uh, sure. Um, and uh, thank you all for, for recognizing Darren tonight. Um, when I became prosecutor, when I was about to become prosecutor a little over five years ago, and I got advice from former prosecutors and current prosecutors, they said to me, Make sure you have a chief of detectives that you're comfortable with because over the next five years, you're not going to speak to anybody more than, than he or she other than your wife. And that actually wound up being a close call um, <laughs> because it, it is an incredibly important relationship. Um, it's an incredibly important uh, job uh, for the county and for public safety, not, not just within our office, but also, um, as our uh, mandate is also to oversee the local police departments in our county, um, his relationship with the county chiefs is also very important. Um, and Darren has just been absolutely outstanding. I mean, his judgment is spot on. His work ethic is, is beyond compare. I mean, literally, I mean, his job is a 24-7 job, and he put in 24-7. And, and I can attest to that because we've spoken at all times of day and night literally at all times of day and night. Um, and I would always get you know, great information, great advice, um, and um, good decision-making um, at times that it was not easy to make those decisions. Um, he's cared about our office, he's cared about the county, um, and he's cared about the people in our office. And uh, relatively recently, he actually you know, saved the career of a detective who was going through a difficult time and was maybe um, going to just leave uh, their position as a detective. And, you know, Darren got in their ear, sat down with him, and just said, don't do anything rash. You know, there's options. We have an incredible resiliency program. And he gave this person the, the space and the time and the reassurance to think it through. And this person is now back with us and a tremendous productive detective. And it's because Darren cared about, you know, them and made sure that they were okay, um, got help they needed, and we are all better for it, and certainly they are all better for it. And that's just one example, and I, and I could 
probably speak all night just about what a tremendous job and asset he's been. Um, again, not just to me, which is true to me, but also really to the office and the county. And uh, I thank you for recognizing that and thank him for his tremendous service. Thanks, Scott. Thank you. Because you're next. You stay right here. Stay here. No, 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 no. But that, no, wait, I need Darren first. Okay. This is a small token of our appreciation for what Darren is providing <laughs> for residents of Burlington County. We want to wish you all the best in retirement. Thank you, and thank you for your service thank to the people you. of Burlington County. And look at that lady right over here. Now for the main event. <laughs> He has 20 years. I've only had five. Well, when we finish, we come back. <laughs> We're recognizing our prosecutor, Scott Trapina, for his outstanding service to Burlington County as the top law enforcement official. I feel very confident in saying this. We're a better, safer county because of his leadership and service. From the moment he took office in April of 2018, Scott has given his all to the job of Burlington County Prosecutor. One of his first official actions as prosecutor was to ride along with local police officers so he could become more familiar with local operations and the pressure officers face every day. And even before he took his oath as prosecutor, Scott toured the County Public Safety Building with police leaders and local community leaders to look at the operations there. For the past five years, Pre Prosecutor Kofina has prioritized combating violent crime in our neighborhoods, while also initiating new programs and partnerships to fight the addiction epidemic. He pushed to prosecute drug dealers connected to fatal overdoses, and more than two dozen have been charged with strict liability homicide, one of the highest totals in the state. He also empowered our local police to give assistance to those looking to break free from addiction's grip. The Straight to Treatment program his office initiated allows people suffering from substance use disorder to walk into participating police departments and receive help clearing warrants and connecting to treatment. More than 500 people have been assisted by the program since its launch. Likewise, Prosecutor Kofina's leadership has also been credited in the development of a training program to help officers and assistant prosecutors cope with mental and emotional stress they experience on the job. What began as a Burlington County initiative under Scott's leadership has grown to a statewide program and directive. It has improved the health and well-being of those we depend on to protect and serve. And as much as one life can affect another, the man to my left, has affected people's lives in ways that will last long after his tenure. I could list dozens more examples of the excellent work our prosecutor's office has accomplished during Scott's term, but we'd be here all night. We owe you an enormous debt of gratitude, Scott. <laughs> Personally, I was liaison to the prosecutor's office when I first got on the board, and Scott took me uh, and uh, asked me to attend a program on officer resiliency. And what I didn't understand is he kept thanking me during the program about three times. And I told him, this is one of the most unbelievable things I'd ever heard. And it was a program that grew out of a tragedy in the prosecutor's office. So it, it just tells you the kind, of, the kind of man that we have here. That when he sees a problem, he figures out a way to address it. And we're all in his debt. So on behalf of our entire board, Scott, and all of our residents, we say thank you. And we wish you well in the next summer. Scott, this small token of our appreciation from our entire board. Just want to express my thank you back to you and, and to the board. Um, we had a department meeting, phone call about two weeks ago, and we were just talking about you know various things going on in the county. And it, it's incredible as you think back at the you know no, no office works in isolation here. Uh, and we don't do anything without the support of the commissioners. I mean, what we've accomplished together, the forensic service.
services building, which is state of the art out in Pemberton, um, with a high tech crime unit uh, lab and facility that you know, if people come by to tour um, so that they can plan their own. And in an area with digital evidence that's exploded and will continue to explode, and we now have the capacity for our, all of our evidence, but our digital to process digital evidence. Um, thanks to your support of that really incredible, as we call it, a generational project for us. Um, and our crime scene, our crime scene lab is out there too. We have again the, the space and state of the art facility to be able to do our job as effectively as as our officers and our detectives do. Um, we we work together on fleets. You know, to be, we actually got better cars for less money because we work together to find a, a, a solution. Um, <laughs> You know, contracts that we work together in difficult times. Um, we got through COVID together. The Department of Health, we couldn't have done it without them. We couldn't have done the building and forensic services without Builders and Browns and their incredible help. It, um, you know, we're on the phone with the solicitor a lot getting their help. Certainly, are, we're on the, um, uh, on the phone with the finance office a lot getting their help. We got grants together. Um, all of it is, is teamwork, um, and we really appreciate your support. And uh, it's been a, a partnership that really has been tremendous. Um, I don't want to leave Eve out of it. Um, I, she's under the weather tonight yeah. and not here. Um, but uh, I couldn't ask for more support than from her and from Todd in the, in the front office. Uh, just incredible you know, conversation and, and the ability to work together. Um, and really appreciate it. And I would miss our partnership. And, and I wish all four of you and, and Valdir all the best going forward. Thank you so much. Thanks so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. One more time. You know, we get the department has come before us for requests for this, that, and the other. And I gave Scott a nickname because uh, he's gone now, as many of our departments have, and they get a lot of money for grants, which saves our county residents taxes. Uh, Scott, I want to say, if we go back and look at his record in the about four years I've been here, I don't think he's had but one or two requests that required a county match. So I gave him the nickname of No County Match Cofina. Uh, and it's just another way that he's uh, served the residents of this county so well. So, Scott, I can't wish you anything more. Any, all the best. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Now move on to public comments on agenda items. Anyone who wishes to speak on other topics will have a chance to do so later in the meeting. When it is your turn to speak, please state your full name and address for the record. As a reminder, each speaker is limited to four minutes and may speak only once for public comment portion. Luis Lopez. This is for our infrastructure bank for 2022. Uh, this is used for financing the transportation infrastructure. Okay. Uh, and um, Mr. Brickley, if I'm commuting, uh, please feel free to chime in. K6 is, is, is no, all the bond witness here is we had unexpended monies. This is a similar thing. It's an award and or a rejection of contracts to the Department of Finance and Administration. 
Does that CFO concur, concur in that explanation? Uh, close. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Yes. Twenty. Sherlock, can you comment on page twenty? Oh. It's. Oh, I'm sorry. Doctor Connolly, I'm sorry. This is the Department of Health. It's the Lead Prevention Program. This is a, a renewal of um, a long-standing program of public health grants in Chapter 14 address uh, uh, lead, um, lead contamination. I'm sorry, I'm question for Jim because uh, as a child or a student or a family, you know, you know have some kind of lead problem at the house or that considered as funding? I think that's part of it. I don't know that Dr. Connolly can You said the, the, the department does as well and will uh, evaluate once uh, they will um, evaluate uh, children who have um, been reported to have high levels of lead, lead in their system and then will go to the home, assess the soil, will assess the household for sources of lead, do remediation. And K-22 is uh, an expenditure for uh, advertisement on Comcast related to Department of Health Public Services. We appreciate it. I'm You're ready welcome. for the next section of our comment. Thank you. Do we have anybody else for comments on agenda items? Seeing that I'll move the opposing this portion of public comment. I would like to make a motion to approve resolutions K1 through K7 for unanimous consent. <coughs> motion by Fulman, seconded by Hobson. Any questions? All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstentions? Motion passed. Deputy Director Fulman. Motion by Fulian, second by Thompson. Any questions? All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Abstentions? Motion passes. Commissioner Epple. Thank you, Director. I'd like to make a motion to approve resolutions K14 through K18 and your Motion by Echo, seconded by Hobson. Any questions? All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? <coughs> Abstentions? Motion passes. Commissioner Hobson. Thank you, Director. I'd like to make a motion to move the consent of Sections K1, K19 through K24. Motion by Hobson. Seconded by O'Connor. Any questions? All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Abstentions? Motion passes. Do you have any questions from the media this evening? We'll now take moving on to public comments on non-agenda items. Each speaker is limited to four minutes and may only speak once per public comment portion. When it is your turn, please state your full name and address for the record. We will start with Jay Levinson. Thank you. My name is Jay Levinson, 38 Lowell Drive in Marlton, New Jersey. I was last here on uh, April the 13th when I asked about the 12% of the budget that was identified as other expenses. 
that amount was almost $27 million. It appears from uh, what limited data has been provided to me so far, uh, which was from the finance department, 51% uh, of their other expenses were other expenses. Is this typical of all the other departments? It's taken over a month of late email exchanges and a whole set here for your information since I last appeared here just to get to the point where we're now required to submit an OPA request, which I asked the very first day whether I needed to do that or not. I was told no, I did not. So it's been over a month now I'm back to having to submit an OPA request to get the data that I was promised the very first day. I feel very strongly that I'm being stonewalled by this organization, by this, by this township, this county, excuse me. Uh, I guess the big question is, if I can't get the data, what do you have to hide? Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Williams. There's a copy of all the information. Martin Carney. Martin Carney, 14, Earl Gate, Malta, New Jersey. Good evening. It's been a tragic week. So many different ways. But this evening, I'm here to talk about something very simple fairness. On April 27, Jeff Fortune, a Republican candidate, or commissioner stated the Democrats had 35 days to fill the seat that Mrs. Echo now holds. He filled it on day 101. I ask you, does this bring into question that every vote she takes between now and 1231, if challenged, will hold up in court? It's a good question. Burlington County Democrat Chair Tom Amel has said he disagrees that Mrs. Eckel is illegally occupying a seat. He said the citizens of Burlington County deserve a full complement of its county representation. It took you all 101 days to fill the seat, but without a vote by the citizens. You approved the Democrat. Is that fair representation? This Monday, a Supreme Court judge ruled Mrs. Eckel can keep her seat. Although Democratic officers missed the statutory deadline by 66 days, Judge Harrington wrestled with his decision, saying this is not crystal clear. He said he doesn't see anybody suffering as a result of the lateness. So what was the rush to fill the seat? Then? Not for the people, but was it for the Democratic agenda? For me, as a citizen of Burlington County, it should come down the one simple question, do we follow the law or not? In this case, if the answer is no, then each of you, quite frankly, should resign. If the answer is yes, then the unlawful appointment of Mrs. Eckel cannot stand. In conclusion, I'm disappointed with the judge's ruling because that means that laws really don't mean anything anymore. Laws are broken here and rules were bent. So I guess that's a new precedent for the future set by the Democrats. Remember that when Republicans want to fill a seat with one of their own after the fact, like you all did, the precedent will be set. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Mr. And I'm just here for a public comment on the mask mandate in Medford Township on the schools and the kids. You guys appointed some school board people that apparently still think the latest round of COVID hurts kids, which we know from documented science, it does not. We know now how much damage 
kids suffer from masks, yet you're still wreaking this ridiculous policy. And I think the tragedy, and I hope the people of Medford elect a better board. Thank you, Ms. Wood. Good evening. Lewis Wilson, nice to be have a trial. I just want to be the name of the of the oldest kid in the from Texas. If you don't mind, just to let everybody know, remember the names. First one is Juan Garcia, eight years old. Xavier Lopez, ten years old. Amai Joe Garcia, ten. Jose Flores, ten. Eva Bishai, twenty four. The Amai Garcia. Let's try it. I heard there's like two hours when that happened. I cannot text her. I have three text alerts from three different states put to my phone. One of them is Texas. Second one's New Jersey. And the third one's California. Why well, I picked this three? I've been there before. And uh question is about the bridges. About all the local bridges, like the Mahali bridges, all around. What would happen if truck keep going over the limit and the collapse? How do people, how can you restrict the uh, trucks going by? Assume that they're the truck and truck driver and the trucking company is working for them. They don't like it. Okay. And uh, uh, a question for her, the Bounty County Health Department. Mm -hmm. Has there been any cases that went to you know our county of uh, uh, for hepatitis? Have there been any uh, any cases or just you? Very low. Yes. I've been having, I've been, you know, having all over from Delaware, but I reach in New Jersey to be confirmed. Okay. Dr. Conaway, did you hear the question? I did not hear the question. He, he was wondering if the uh, hepatitis outbreak, if we have had any cases yet in Burlington County. We had some. Uh, there is uh, a concern with uh, a couple of years ago, hepatitis in Asia in particular. Um, uh, we have, uh, and the state has been cognizant of uh, that issue of infection in Burlington. I think Kansas is Gloucester. Um, I think there's been some grants. So there, the answer is yes. There's still been some cases out there. Uh, and a quick comment. Where is my friend, Kate Giz? She's a, you know, a current member of the Republican County. Where she's at. Thank you. Thanks, Louise. Thanks for coming. Uh, Jeff Fortune. Hello, Mr. O'Connell. Uh, thank you for supporting me. This. My name is Jeff Fortune. I reside at 96 Westbrook Drive in Morristown. First of all, I'd like to thank you, Louise, for naming those uh, children that were lost. Uh, my heart's been just broken by the tragedy. Um, but unfortunately, I'm here to uh, speak on what's going on uh, with our commissioners. I'm so disappointed that I have to be here again to say this. But Allison Hector does not belong in that seat. Deadlines should matter. The Democrat Party had 35 days to fill Linda Hines. Vacancy and instead chose to wait to appoint Ms. Eckler. 101 days later, 
She should not be rewarded for her party's disregard for the rule of law. It is clear that the Burlington County Democrats think the rules don't apply to them. They would not have broken the law and seated an illegitimate commissioner if they did. Missing the deadline was not a one-time mistake or an oversight. It is a pattern of the all-Democrat commissioner board showing its incompetence in running county government. We've seen this board blow past statutory deadlines, dole out grants to Democrat-run towns, alienate the first responder community when making appointments to the Emergency Services Advisory Board. Appoint an illegitimate commissioner with a history, and this is what's more disturbing for me, uh, because we have such rampant uh, crime, in particular in our communities, and more importantly in black and brown communities, someone who is spewing anti-police rhetoric. We need to support our police. We need to fund our police. And we've just seen this week that the radical appointments you all have made to the county school board have now mandated met once again for BCIT students. The residents of Burlington County have seen clearly what they get when Democrats end up in positions of power, and we've had enough. The residents of Burlington County deserve to have responsible individuals in charge who pay attention to rules, laws, and deadlines. <laughs> Not individuals who think the rules don't apply to them. County voters are sick. They're sick of your shenanigans. And come November, the voters will do what the judge failed to do. And we will have someone in that seat who deservedly belongs there. Thank you, guys. Have a great holiday. Going to repeat what the other people have said. I'm not going to talk about timelines because I know you know the information. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Nancy Berkeley, 226 Olive Street, Rain Pickles Village in Lithgow. Um, but I want to take it from now because the judge has already decided. So I want to talk about what happens from now. I looked up the definition of precedent, an earlier event that is regarded as an example or guide to be considered in subsequent circumstances. You have started a precedent. I don't know if you did that, but you wondered what happens after that. This is just what you have done. There are strict election laws that you have chosen not to follow. A law is a law until the courts deem it otherwise. And now you have wiped away an election law for all of New Jersey because you have gotten a Democratic judge basically to say that Time to replace was either not a law or a bad law. So you've wiped it away for all of New Jersey. Put yourself, as someone said now, if the other parties are going to have that. They're going to go back on what you did. What is next? Are you still going to hold firm about hat turning in your petitions at 4 p.m. on the dot? Or can you slip it under the door at 7 p.m.? We had a candidate that heard in his petition at 4 o'clock, according to his watch, the clerk said, I'm sorry, my, my clock says 402. You will not be on the ballot. If they need 25 signatures and have only 24 because one was not a registered voter or independent, are you still going to allow it? 
There are reasons for the loss. I bet if it was Republican, you would have not fought for this. But think about it. What other things are going to happen because people decide, I'll go to a judge, and it's so close. A person needed 19 signatures for a petition. Turned out, the clerk said, well, you really need 19.3. That's not half. No, nope. so you need 20. It was rejected. And how many times have you seen on the television people saying, the election was fraud. We want this. We want that. How many times have that done that? And now they're going to give you're going to give them more reason to call things fraud in the future. So when you do something like this, I would like you to consider this is what we're doing now. How is it going to affect the future? You already had four Democrats up there. If it was two Republicans and two Democrats, I could see why you would fight. But one more Democrat is not going to change your votes. So what are you doing this for? not believe it was the right decision, but I think we all have consequences that we have to follow, and I'm concerned for the future. Um, my second concern is, I've talked many times about the bridge up here. I'm not going to repeat what I've said about that. There's more warehouses coming. Both Mr. Horton in West Hampton and on Central Bridge are building 500 condominiums or townhouses and uh, apartments. We're going to have a 2,000 more people on, on these roads. I went to a meeting from um, the, uh, Congressman Andy Kim, who had invited local legislators, local commissioners, I mean, committee people and other people to a meeting to talk about infrastructure. I was shocked that even though it was a night meeting, it was all for anyone elected in Burlington County, only about 15 people showed up. And less of that than that, had ideas of how to spend the infrastructure money. He told us that not all the money is going to be passed down to the county. He has his own money that he can spend. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. My name is Ann Quinn. I live at 1404 Red Feather Trail, Farmers Mills, New Jersey. I have lived in this county 20 years. As far as I'm concerned, we robbed the people of this county and our children to make the decision as who gets to fill the seat. As far as I'm concerned, Judge Harrington's comment was a cop out. The language of the law, the way I read it, was abundantly clear. Time and time again, when the Democrats get in office and have control over everything, you are so irresponsible that years down the road, when you leave, us taxpayers are still feeling the pinch, okay? In some of the things that I have read that you have posted on your website, you say that you that you care about the residents of Burlington County? I don't think so. Had you cared, you wouldn't have broken the law. Allison Echol does not deserve to sit there. You took it away from the voters to decide in November. And as long as the good Lord gives me breath in my lungs, I will do everything I can physically to make sure that everybody I talk to knows what kind of a corrupt board we have. Because you have not only made it hard for my daughter, but you have also made it hard for my granddaughter. And the precedent that you set, you were basically telling the younger generation that laws don't matter, that the Constitution doesn't matter, that our freedoms don't matter. You all still need to go to jail. You need to step down tonight. I have a, a handout to give each one of you from someone bringing them up to you. 
uh, Joanne Mortimer. I live at 202 South Boulevard Avenue in Maple Shade. And I'm a lifetime resident of Maple Shade. Um, one of my concerns is the issues that we have on our Main Street. And you might wonder, well, why are you up here at the county? Uh, Main Street is a county road. All right. Um, years back, we had crosswalk lights installed in Maple Shade that worked perfectly. Uh, to get a picture of them, you can refer to your third page there. Uh, however, after years go by, the ground lights stopped working. So it created a real problem in town. Uh, number one, the lights were too high up in the air. Uh, so as cars approached the crosswalk and people lit the lights, uh, it just didn't work out. I mean, people were in danger. And as you can see from the picture, the yellow light is only on one side of the crosswalk as you come from each direction. The ground lights that we used to have lit up and they were very visible on the roadway. And the system worked perfectly. Um, a couple years ago, I pleaded with the township four or five meetings to uh, get something done about this. And uh, I finally told them two years ago I was going to a freeholders meeting because I do admire the power that you have. And um, they kept blaming the county. The county won't let us do it. They won't repair the lights in the ground. They won't let us put cones in the middle of the street. They won't let us put up additional signage. Well, finally, after I said I was coming to a meeting, the next day, the county did come, and they lowered the lights. They can only lower them so far because of tractor trailers. But we need additional lighting on each side of the poles. Morristown has red and blue lights. They're very visible for people to see. Or the ground lights need to be fixed, one or the other. Uh, my father was killed on Main Street crossing the street. And there have been three others since he died. You know, and life is very important. And I know you feel it's important. So I would feel very good if you addressed the situation on our main street. Uh, the question is, we know it's a county road, so who has the say? Do you have the say on the work that is done on Main Street? I will investigate that. Uh, with regards to signage and the lighting, we follow the MUTCD, which is the federal guidelines for installation of crosswalk signage. Uh, it's a manual for the of traffic control devices. So I will look into that with my staff. Uh, with regards to the crosswalk, I believe the lighting was installed under a program that was uh, sponsored by the township. So I will investigate that. Ms. Okay. Moore, we have, we have your name. We'll get to the county engineer. Okay. So you can, you can get back to yeah, we would like one or the other. Um, oh, okay. I'll have to come back next month. Thank you. Or well, you can send me an email answering your question. Okay, we have your email right here. Could you do that, please? Yeah, give that to our staff here. Thank you very much. Anyone else for public comment on non-agenda items? Yes, ma'am. Hello, Lori Howard, uh, 97 Kettlebrook Drive in Mount Laurel. I uh, first want to read something on behalf of someone who was not able to comment tonight. Um, regarding the center and bridge and rebuilding the bridge and the reason the bridge is important. Um, a road is a road that gets you places, they say. Well, maybe it doesn't. 
A hundred years ago, Rancocos Road, Springside Road, and Cinnamon Road were all farm roads that take you from one farm community to another. For the most part, they have not changed, even though there are thousands more that use that road. In the early 70s, the freeholders recognized that Rancocos Road did not do a good job to take people places, so they created the Rancocos Bypass. The state also created Route 295 in the same area. 50 years later, sorry, I can't believe it. We have COVID, let's stay with me. Um, 50 years later, now these roads are not doing a good job taking you in each direction, and 295 is so crowded that accidents are frequently happening. There are just too many people living in the area that need to get places, and soon both Springside Road and Citroen Road will be adding at least another 1,000 residents. Do you know in 2021, the West Hampton Fire Company had over 4,000 calls, 1,000 more than in previous years? The state is not going to widen 295, so to make it safe for all, we need additional lanes by rebuilding the Zinnerman Bridge. Um, please stop making political excuses. We now know that Democrat Assemblywoman Carol Murphy is behind this because she lives in Rancocos Point. Why one woman can get what she personally wants over 5,000 residents that signed a petition for rebuilding the bridge is certainly not a servant, but pure and simple using her power for selfish reasons. Please do what is right. Show people you represent everyone, not just the Democrats in power. Give us a safe way to travel before, it kill ourselves, before we kill ourselves. Um, secondly, I do want to thank Mr. Levente for getting back to me um, about some of the questions about infrastructure money. Um, one part here, you said it's not prudent for Burlington County to announce a list of priority projects intended for infrastructure grants. And Burlington County intends to aggressively pursue federal infrastructure funding. I do think it's important as representatives for the county that you determine some priorities. To wait till the last minute when the money's already going to be used, it just seems, it doesn't make sense to me. Um, and I can share this with you. There was recently a webinar about reconnecting communities, and again, the bridge was torn down. You, you took away the connection between Willingboro and Mount Laurel. And for me, there's so many implications of that, but it really, and I've had people, black, white, Spanish, Asian, tell me, it's just a shame because if the other side of that bridge was not majority black, it would have been taken care of throughout the years, and it would not have been torn down. Um, with, within this piece that I'm going to give to you, the federal government actually tells people, if you want to apply for stuff, here's some things that you can do. There are six bullet points. And my concern is that nothing's being done. When you don't promote things, it makes it look like you're not doing anything. So I know you're saying you're doing this, we thought about this, we're not doing that. But it doesn't look like you're doing anything. In regards to pedestrian bridge, I know you're not going to be moving forward with that. And so Vince, I did send you another email, so although you're not moving forward, I still want some questions answered about conceptual design. So again, I think this is, it's just getting pushed and pushed and pushed. And I would like you to publicly state what you're going to do, whether you're going to build a pedestrian bridge, no bridge or not. It just, because I'm controlling the message on the Facebook page and others are as well, so we don't have any information from you. It just makes it look like, like, what's, like no one's making a decision. And I feel as commissioners, you should be making the decisions. If you have to tell us someone a hard answer, like we can't do this, then tell me why. It really does feel like there's been this plan in place to put this pedestrian bridge up for years, again, it doesn't matter who's on the board, and I've said that before. But no one's saying, like, why, tell me why the bridge is important. We've told you, and you're like, we have money, we'll build it. But I, I still don't get the feeling, the sincerity that you realize the importance of this bridge to people that live in Burlington County. It just seems, again, it's not, this is not personal, it's just you're in the position of leadership, you need to lead. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Anybody else for comments, public comments this evening? Once, twice, I'll close this portion of uh, public comments and now go on to the comments from our commissioners. Commissioner. May 14th, I met with uh, several members of Lenape High School's Army Human Reserve Officer Training Corps. They presented the county animal shelter with a great donation of items that they had collected from that community. Uh, but more than that, they, um, the students had prepared educational components to help the community learn various things about the pets at the shelter and to inform uh, visitors when they came there. And I was, I was very impressed by the students who, who put all that work into it and under the direction of a junior named Joelle Gray, who uh, showed outstanding leadership and intelligence, and I'd just like to commend her publicly for that. Thank you. Okay, I'd just like to thank everyone for coming. I hope you guys have a great Memorial Day weekend. Thank you. 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 Th
Each May, we celebrate Jewish American Heritage Month. It's a time to recognize the incredible achievements made by Jewish Americans. <laughs> and important scientific discoveries by Albert Einstein to Ruth Bader Ginsburg serving on the United States Supreme Court. Jewish Americans played a huge role in where America stands today. They have fought for and died for our country. Marched for civil rights here and created amazing works of art, music, and literature. Here in Burlington County, County Clerk Joanne Schwartz is not only the first female county clerk, but also a Jewish American. Earlier tonight, we honored Prosecutor Scott Kuklina, who's also a member of the Jewish community. Many more Jewish Americans have made outstanding contributions to Burlington County, New Jersey, and our nation. We celebrate their achievements and vow to continue to honor their traditions and heritage in their fight for justice, equality, and freedom. I'd like to invite everyone to the county's Memorial Day ceremony on Monday at 11 a.m. at Veterans Memorial Park on Old York Road in Burlington Township. Major General Mark Kammerer, the commander of the U.S. Air Force Expeditionary Center at Joint Base McGuire Fish Lakehurst, will be providing the keynote address. All the different organizations, groups that invite us to different events. But I'm not going to mention this tonight. Because tonight is about what happened earlier today. And what happened a few days ago in Buffalo, New York. Now I've told you folks I'm 71, I'll be 72 years of age. never had to do a drill life in an active shooting. didn't have to have a policeman in my school. And there's but I also know there's something wrong with a person having a weapon that was designed to be on a battlefield, not in an elementary school. I don't know what it'll take. I understand the Constitution. I understand people's right to bear arms. There's never an Sorry, I'm not a hunter, but I've always felt safe in my community by the people that are there and sworn to protect me. 
with what we've gone through in the last few years with disease and one of the reasons we passed the no stigma to Peronti County because we do realize there's a mental health issue going on in our country. We don't want people to feel one ashamed of it. It's not a weakness. It's a reaction to things both inside the person and outside the person. And we want you to get help, and there's help at the county level. So, in closing, I, uh, I hope you'll remember uh, Louisa read those names, and it's kind of hard to keep it together while you're doing it. Last comment about Memorial Day. Please don't go wishing people a happy Memorial Day. It's not that kind of holiday. I know people mean well, but this is the holiday where we remember the people that gave what Abraham Lincoln called the last full measure of devotion. And I know that they're looking down on us their ball games or barbecues or whatever we're going to do this weekend. Pretty happy. Keep them in your thoughts and prayers, too. Thank you all for coming this evening, and uh, I will get home safe. I'd like to have a motion to adjourn, please. All in favor, say aye. aye. We are adjourned.